Happy Monday night, people. I'm Ryan and I have been hacking things my whole life. Today, we're going to be making a 3D mold that you can print and you can mold cement and ceramic and even fiberboard. You can make planners for Etsy. You can sell tons of stuff. Once you make the mold, you can reuse them and create really solid looking objects. There's so many things you could do with this. I'm really excited about this project. However, there's going to be two videos. This first video is going to explain how you do it in Fusion because you have to make your own version so you don't have any copyright issues and it's your own. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm even available down in comments if you want me to make a quick video. So this is video one where we're going to go into Fusion 360. It's a free program. It's pretty powerful. And we're going to be designed in Fusion and then we are going to be in the next one. We're going to print the molds and we're going to be making it out of some cement, some colored cement. It's going to be a pretty fun project. I'm really excited. I don't think this is going to be a very long series. I think it's just going to be a two part video. So let's get started in Fusion 360. So if you're new to my channel, I have four different robots. I have 3D printers. I have a laser cutter, a CNC and a plasma cutter that cuts out metal. So if you're clicked on this video, we're talking about 3D printing. We're going to be in Fusion right now. We're not going to be whatever. That was a mispronunciation of mispronunciations. So we are in Fusion right now, and we're going to be starting out with the sketch tool. I am going to go to new sketch. I have a brand new design that I've already saved the file so that I can hit uh, command S and it will save the file automatically. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create the contour that I'm going to revolve. I'm going to use from the create menu. I'm going to use the revolve tool, but I have to create the profile of my design first, but I need to know generally how big is the actual planter. So by making initial rectangle and I choose it from the center point out, um, I am choosing a dimension that I'm in metric right now, 150 by 70, that I know that a planter is roughly that size, larger, maybe give or take some. Then what I'm going to do is still in the sketch tool, I'm going to be using the line tool and I am going to sketch out the, my outside profile. You can come back and edit this, but it's best to get your points right. In future videos, I'm going to show you how to do really cool spiral and vortex designs. But right now, I'm just laying out some random points. The points are really important to do because um, you're kind of deciding like, what points do I want on the outside so that I can um, move them? And if I don't like the design, I can actually move the point of the sketch and I can edit those points. So taking your time to get the points right. So like already, I'm not liking this profile, so I'm going to go back and edit it, but I'm going to keep those amount of points. I'm making the bottom line, which is the bottom line of the actual um, planter. And then I'm going to be doing a taper, which is going to be the taper that's inside. Remember that what I'm trying to do is create a profile that I can revolve. I have a solid and I want to go under to create revolve and that will revolve my actual object. This is pretty powerful. So this is very fast to do everything in the sketch. I can go back and edit. So if you don't like the design, you can move it back. Matter of fact, I think I've go back to these multiple times. If you want to create different versions, you certainly have to go back to the sketch and with the history and then change it. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to start creating the mold. This is the actual planter. So the mold needs a quarter section that I'm going to rotate. I'm going to print each of the quarter sections. So 25% of the mold. So I'm making a square um, that's 220 millimeters square down below. And then I'm going to do some intersect lines. And then I'm going to, I'm hitting um, cut, but I'm going to hit new body there. And I'm going to extrude up that part all the way up to the top of the surface. I extruded this a little bit more than I needed to, but I'm going to, you can see here that I'll end up fixing it so that um, I'm going to go ahead and fix the top so that I'm at the top of the surface. So the top of the surface, I believe was 150 millimeters tall. 
So once I got that, I'm going to go ahead and do a Boolean operation, which is called combine inside of Fusion 360. And I'm going to take away the outside part of the vase from the, the corner object. I went ahead and extruded the base down a little bit below so that I can have a little bit of substance so that the concrete or fiber board won't slip out. So when I do the Boolean operation, I no longer need the middle section so I can go ahead and hit remove. I'm just hiding it because I'm going to use it for my insert in my inside part of the mold. I'm going to mirror it and join it. So hang on because I'm going to turn it off and then I'm going to be using that. So all the parts I'm going to be needing. I did a combine operation cut and that gave it to me. Now I'm going to mirror this inside thing, creating the inside part of my mold. I created two construction planes, one that is uh, tangent to the side, the X, and then the Y. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose my object, which is the body. And then I'm going to choose my plane and then hit mirror. And that starts building my inside part of my mold. And now I'm going to choose my other two objects. And there you go. I have the inside part of my mold. All I need now is a lid. I'm going to go ahead and turn a couple different objects off. And now really what I'm going to do is the next thing I have to do is realize that I need a little bit of distance. So when I put the top part of the mold in that the mold actually has a place to recess. That is the size of the planter. But I want to be able to um, go ahead and going ahead and saving the file. I want to be able to lift up the outside part of the mold at least 10 millimeters. And that is going to be my top lid. I went ahead and joined that. And now I have a quarter section of my um, the outside of my mold. I'm just kind of turning objects on and off right now so that I can really see what's going on. So I'm using the eyeball on the left hand side to just kind of turning things on and off so that I can understand what's going on. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to work on now that I have the in part inside part of my mold, I'm going to work on the actual lid, the top part of the lid. So I, I went ahead and made a new component for my mold and I'm starting to organize things. So what I'm doing is copying the bodies. I'm right clicking the top component and I am making a new component um, in that component. I just go ahead and paste in that particular object. Now what I'm doing is making the top part of the lid. I made a circle and then I extruded that circle 10 millimeters to match the distance of the outside mold. So now I have the lid so I can put that all in my inner mold component. I copied those bodies and I went and pasted them inside my other component. Right click, copy, right click, paste. I now can turn off my inside mold and now I'm going to focus in on the quarters. You're going to end up printing these. These are going to be identical. They're identical pieces, but we're going to design them all together just like it's just good to place everything out. So now for the molds to be nestled in, I need to have a male and female slot on each side. So I'm creating a rectangle here and then I'm going to chamfer the edges. That's bevel the edges so that it's each mold part slides into each other. Um, now, this is something that you could do uh, however big you want. This is what worked out for my mold. After I'm done, I want to go ahead and inset it a little bit. That's a little too much. It would probably break off. So I'm going to go ahead and select my move tool and I'm going to move it in. And all I have is a little triangle. I'm going to use rubber bands to combine all four of these pieces. So what I need now is I'm going to rotate this object. I'm going to copy it, move, translate, rotate. I'm trying here and I'm, I'm rotating on the wrong axis. It's important to choose the right axis. Okay. So now I'm sort of figuring out like where, what axis can I do? And then I realized that I need the Y axis, which I'm going to pull off of an edge down at the bottom. So you can see here that I pulled off the right axis to rotate that on. And now I'm going to do a Boolean and combine it. And I'm going to remove it from that outside edge. Now, wherever my when I print my object, wherever it, 
the quarters are all matching, so they all fit together now. The last thing I'm going to do here with this mold is I'm going to join that little combined piece um, so that it's all one piece. And then I'm going to start duplicating each of these just for illustration purposes. You don't really need to do this because you're going to print that same identical part. They will all rotate 90 degrees and fits. You only need one of these, but I'm just doing this for illustration. I'm going to pull them apart 60 uh, millimeters just to kind of show you um, exactly how all this is built together. Uh, it's was uh, it's also going to be kind of neat for my thumbnail of my video. Um, and I don't know why I left that random bevel piece. I think I copied it and it left a copy there, but I'm going to delete it here in a second. So I'm just going to move this 60 millimeters in and out. And then the final uh, quadrant 60 millimeters in and out. So those are the four pieces that come together. They'll be banded uh, with a rubber band. The concrete will be poured and then you'll go ahead and put in the top piece. Just for illustration purposes, I'm kind of separating everything together. And then I'm going to go into um, the uh, rendering section and I'm going to choose a surface just for fun. Maybe some granite here. I was hoping there would be cement, but I couldn't find cement. So I'm going to choose granite, just kind of showing you the difference between the two. And that is it. There is the all the pieces that are needed. I need a total of five pieces and some rubber bands and some concrete. And that is how you make a mold in Fusion 360. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in for the next video where we're going to actually print this and we're going to make this out of cement. I probably will tweak the design a little bit. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for being here and thank you for your support. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.